Hey everybody, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back to Sharp Objects. So today I'm doing a review on a film that I kind of just saw on a whim, so this is pretty impromptu, but it's for P.T. Anderson's Inherent Vice. I had a really good time with this film, uh, and I, I love watching films by myself too. I like just observing them, and it's a film that I know I want to see again and again and again. So I decided I would do a little review of it here for you, because I figured this is the proper place to, and it would give you an idea of whether or not you should check it out. Based off of the Thomas Pynchon book by the same name, Inherent Vice is, to put it best, a crime mystery wrapped in a lovable, paranoia-infused drug trip. There's a lot going on in this story, whether main or subplot, so let me give you a gist of things. Doc Spurtello, played by Joaquin Phoenix, is a pot-smoking private investigator living in the South Bay area of LA. He is visited by an ex-girlfriend named Shasta Faye Hepworth, played by Katherine Waterston, who is now entwined with a hotshot property developer Mickey Wolfman, played by Eric Roberts. This later leads to the disappearance of both Shasta and Mickey, unwinding a strangely curious series of events involving a velvet-draped coke-snorting psychodontist, a lovably dry, frighteningly flat-topped cop, Sharp as Nails Chick Planet Hostess, and a mythical Golden Fang, among other sights and characters. So how exactly do I describe Inherit Vice? That's a very good question. You know, just formulating the amount of annotations is book-worthy. This, this story, this film, is dense as hell in pop culture references and in inside jokes, which keeps it bizarrely complex in the best of ways. So if you do plan on seeing it, I highly suggest you see it at least twice. One thing that's clear? Each of these characters are weird wash-ups in their own very special way. <laughs> Everyone has a story to tell, with each character having been around the block perhaps one too many times to appear totally coherent. And I guess that's where the hilarious paranoia comes into play. Just watching the completely blitzed Doc staring puzzlingly into nothingness is a total treat. He seriously needs to consider getting together with the dude sometime. <laughs> giving us a dose what it was like to live in the 1970s, a time of absolute political paranoia, and through some of the most unreliable characters imaginable. Hell, even the narrator is unreliable. Anderson has always had this knack for tone, whether we're talking in Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love, etc, etc, etc. And he stays lovingly true to most, if not all, of the source material, which is saying a lot considering Pynchon has a lot to offer. Pynchon is one of those writers who has this magnetic eye for social details, very reminiscent of another writer I really love, Tom Wolfe. I feel like Anderson gets that clever commentary so, so well. Seriously, bless his talented, thoughtful soul. Inherent Vice is a total trip. If you're looking for a good dose of social commentary with less of the intellectual and more of the absurdity and drugs, then you've got it. <laughs> uh, as a longtime fan of Anderson's works, I've got to say this is probably one of his finest, and that's thanks to his keen eye for detail and sharp sense of tone. Who knows if we'll ever see another adaptation of Pynchon's works, but rest assured that Anderson did his damnedest to ensure this was a timeless experience. So I hope you enjoyed my review of P.T. Anderson's Inherent Vice. This was a really fun film. It's out in theaters right now if you want to check it out. Uh, I'm really curious to hear what you thought of it. If you did see it, please leave those in the comments below. I'm really curious. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more videos and sharp objects. And yeah, I guess just stay tuned, okay? I'll see you guys later.